Welcome everyone, this is Pranley Fields, and you're listening to Lotro Players News, where we take a look at the latest news in Lotro, and here at Lotro Players. And this week we have with us, Terry Adwin! Hi hi! And Aaron! Hey everybody! Hello there! Let's head into the news for this week, and we actually do have some news, because there is a patch on Monday. Update 23.3 which has two special things of note. The first item is Tier 3 of the Anvil of Winter Stith, for those who have been waiting for that. Yay, I guess. Yes, and that is going to be opening up on February 7th, and there will be a deed for completing it by March 6, 2019. So you have one month in order to get onto the leading to charge deed for being one of the first people to complete this. So that's tier three difficulty for Angela Winter's fifth, and I think I'll be lucky if I ever do tier one of that. <laughs> we also have coming up on February seventh, in case you're someone who isn't going to be busy running Angela Winter's fifth, and that is the beginnings of the Ill Omens Skirmish Event. And this is going to be Evil Stirs and Meanest Morgul and Harbingers of the Dead sitting spread across Middle Earth. This time limited event adds additional enemies and rewards to all skirmishes in the Lord of the Rings Online through March 11th. By completing a specific set of themed skirmishes each day while the Ill Omens event is active, you'll earn a special currency you can exchange for new gear and cosmetic rewards. As for the most dedicated skirmishers of Middle Earth, players who complete 30 of these quests will earn a powerful level cap statted reward. 30 of them. That's going well, but I mean, how many skirmishes is that? Really? That's that's like two weeks for you, right? <laughs> well, I think that the that these are daily quests, so therefore it's gonna be yeah. So I think that means doing doing whatever the daily quest is thirty times, such as what you have in festivals where you have this daily quest for doing certain things. Yeah, that, so it's just one set. Yeah, but still, I mean it's running a skirmish a day, finally, if that's that's like how many skirmishes do you run a day on a regular basis anyway? <laughs> well, we'll see. have to see what this is. We'll get more details on this on Thursday when the, when the event launches. I suspect it's going to be, for this daily thing, it's going to be three skirmishes a day or something like that, which, yes, I might be able to do. I have, But yes, for your most dedicated skirmishers in Middle Earth, obviously, that particular item is. So we'll see how I'm doing on that when the time comes. But that is Ill Omens. And there will be some, it says some special enemies and rewards in there. The details, I don't know. But I will do a video or two related to this when the, when the event comes live. So what do you say, um, Aranda, since you said that you still don't have all the skirmishes unlocked? Yeah, um, since I'm still in Moria, I don't have... I believe you said it's part of the Moria skirmishes and the Mirkwood skirmish. Right. So I don't know how much I'll be able to participate, but for those skirmishes that I do have, I'm definitely more interested. All right, so which one... How far are you in the Epic on Volume 2 right now? Uh... I don't know if this is a spoiler or not, so potential spoiler for people who haven't gotten past level 55 yet. Um, <laughs> hey, I just, you know, disclaimer. Um, we just fought the Watcher. For the oh, first okay. Time. Yeah, you did the Drowned Treasury. Yep. So that's that's as far as I've gotten. Oh, she said for the first time. That's when you yeah, get so into te- more. Yeah, technically it's a, your second. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Not the, not the very first time. Um... Okay. Yeah. So, the, so the second time, the one where you're in the drowned treasury. Yes, I, I forgot about the first time. Sorry. Yes. In that case, 
Well, you know, it's that been a while. The, yeah, because I believe that's the end of book four. I think so. Of, yes. The skirmishes come in book five. Gotcha. Okay, so I'm almost there. But first you have to do yet more running around in Moria, because, you know, you always wanted to do more of that. Yeah, there's hey. a little bit more running around with more in Moria. You've got a point there, and you've got a an important quest you've got to do, and that important quest then uh, gets close and starts to unlock the skirmishes. Then you have the three skirmishes in quick succession. So you're getting there, and maybe you'll have that unlocked, maybe, well, I don't know how much time you've got this week, but you might even have it before those three skirmishes come up in whatever rotation they have, but yeah, the Mirkwood ones, you probably won't have time for. Probably not, but I'll at least be able to participate in some. Yes, when the Breland ones are up, you'll probably be able to participate in those at least. Yep. Then let's head into some other items in there because there are some class updates also where I'm sure Terry will love this. <sighs> They're giving stupid crossbows to the bears. Yeah. I know! <laughs> yeah, crossbows to the bears. I wonder if this is in tandem with still being broken so that they shoot arrows out of their mouth. I, I still need to test one. that. I thought because I had, but I, I heard Sans Winda complain that she could no longer do it. Oh, sad day. <laughs> I wanted to see it. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. And also, Encouraging Wars Healing Over Time component has been reduced by 15%, and its tier magnitude has been reduced by 1, 2, and 3 to 1, 1.5 and 2, whatever that means. And Bjorning at Avis's set bonus now distributes Encouraging War's healing time component at 20% power increases. Of, so it looks like Encouraging War Roar got a bit of a nerf. And as for Burglar, they were hoping to get in some significant Burglar changes, but when it started looking at it, it was just too little time to do it. But what they did at least do is to put in that moderate damage increase across the board that they were supposed to get back in December. Finally! <laughs> well, you know, better late than never, I guess. I suppose so. We'll see how much I notice it when I'm playing on my burglar next. And many minstrels, oh yeah, and lots of stuff with minstrels. Minstrels actually have a significant update here. The main thing to do is to improve their healing because it sounded like that a lot of minstrels were all depending on one single skill to do all their healing and when that happens, that's when the developers say, oh, maybe something is broken. <laughs> Therefore, there are many, many changes here, and a lot of the minstrels who are following the thread that was going on in there seem to be encouraged by the changes in there. So we'll see what happens when they actually goes live and if everything's working, and of course, if all the changes that are intended actually got in there and actually worked properly, because... That's never 100% sure either. When, Because I think there was only about two weeks of prep for that particular, for those particular changes for the minstrels. So hopefully no new bugs fell into that one. Those are all the class changes that, I, that are in the notes. And a number of things on items. Some Anvil of Winterstead's jewelry has been updated to physical mastery instead of tactical mastery. That makes no sense. It's will jewelry. If you're a will-based class, you want tactical mastery instead of physical mastery. Yeah, right? There is. Hmm. Oh, there is that. That's really strange. Because your uh, will classes are minstrel, 
lore master, rune keeper, who need tactical and not physical. Because when as a minstrel do you actually really use your herald strike? I mean, honestly. Other than me, probably never. Well, okay, so <laughs> I have a challenge mini who I took through Moria and, and beyond. You know, she's level 10-something. And with with no LI to prove a point. And I still have not finished out that Herald Strike D that you have to do for Minstrel. So she's <laughs> still missing that trait point because I never use that skill. It's like the only physical skill that minstrels have, and I never use it. Since I have Why would you want physical mastery? Since I haven't seen the list of Winterstith jewelry, I wouldn't know the answer to that. Well, but it, it says specifically it's the will jewelry. Yes, there is that. I don't know if there were duplicates of the wheel jewelry, so they decided that, well, maybe instead of having two tactical mastery runs, just in case someone wanted Will to improve their resistance to... I guess. To things like that. That's the only thing I could think of, is that if you desperately wanted to increase your your resistance to cries and stuff like that, it just makes no sense. Terry gets all of her resistance off of uh, traits. Her virtues. I don't think any of it comes from her gear. I don't think any of it's will stuff. Well, there is that. Okay. Adventures and Travelers loot boxes now now contain the same cosmetic items. Rupee. <laughs> Wayfarer's armor coffers can now be opened at level 20. Okay. Uh, I guess, I think that's a loot. No, I think that's the coffer that comes out of the loot boxes. Oh, okay. Alright. Crafted shields of Grarik's armory will now consistently display the correct item level for their crit output. Well, that's good. Fixed an issue that could cause items taken from pending loot to not receive their bonus item level adjustment. Fixed a bug that could cause bonus item level adjustments to reward one level higher than expected. And here's, here's a weird one. Arrows that are deflected will now correctly display their arrow in flight and show the appropriate deflected arrow after reaching its target. You would think at the speed at which an arrow flies. <laughs> okay. Right, okay. But it does sound kind of cool. I mean, if you... Depending on what kind of class you play, I mean, sometimes it can be interesting to see, you know, oh, such and such was deflected, and it's still sticking out of your chest. So it's going, okay. <laughs> was it deflected, or was it not? So I guess you got a point there. And additions and changes have been made to items available in adventurers, steel bound loot boxes, and vendors in game. And this includes the essences. The adventurers loot boxes essences now are 372 and 378, up from 366. Little things like that. Blah, and, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> and cosmetic and housing items have been updated to have been added to loot boxes and vendors, including boots, gloves, hooded masks, masks, shoulder pads, breastplates of the Golden Force Defender, brilliant dark defenders, boots, gloves, blah, 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 cloak (laughs) of the Golden Force Defender, and brilliant Force Defender cloak, alabaster garden chairs and tables, alabaster planters with sunflowers, corked bottles, goat of Erit Mithrin, and tomes of the golden barn owl. owl. Can't be bothered to care. Yes. <laughs> and also, the tome of the black massive now properly binds to account on acquire. And the tome of the black massive and the war steed 
of Isengard cosmetic package or Steed of Aerith Mithrin cosmetic package. Visiting Banker and Visiting Barber now have their appropriate disenchant. Why would you want to disenchant that? (laughs) I don't know. Uh, I guess if you have enough for all of your alts, you can just do uh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and they made a number of updates to Anvil of Winter Stith, which I'm not going to go into. And the non-cap featured instant quest will no longer award credit if you complete the instance nine or more levels below your level. Therefore, you can't run it at level 100 and still get the featured instance reward. You'll have, if you're at cap, you have to run it at least 111. That seems fair. Right? No, 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 no. Okay, 112, I guess. Yeah, at least 112 then. Yeah, that seems fair. Yeah, yeah, that's reasonably fair because you don't want to. Honestly, if you're too low, you shouldn't even be getting the quest. Well, I think the thing is, is they don't want people one level one hundred twenty people running at level one hundred and just blowing through it. I guess. I mean, you can run at one twelve and blow through it. Well, yeah, you can still do. I that. should test that at some point. Maybe later when I'm not doing the mixer. Yeah. And the featured instance cap level and challenge quest for Heligrod and School will no longer erroneously bestow. The featured instant system will become available at level 100. That's on the That's legendary, legendary servers. Stuff. Yeah. Right. Because apparently they were showing featured instance even though... I guess because... Yeah, you're at level cap, so therefore... Yeah, you're, you're at level, level cap, yeah. <laughs> Oops. And for the UI, a new option has been added to enable texture cache... When enabled, textures will be cached in system memory, which may improve texture load times at the cost of increased memory usage. This only affects textures loaded after the setting has been changed, and considering that I suspect that the reason why I might occasionally crash is due to memory, I think I'll wait for a 64-bit client before I ever enable that one. Yeah. But apparently that means that they solved the coloring issue. Because wasn't yeah. wasn't this the thing that they had to disable because it was a coloring issue? I forgot. Um, I feel like that sounds right, but yeah, I'm pretty I sure it was like two patches ago that they had to disable it because colors were weird. It is and possible. A, and a new option has been added called release texture. On upload, when texture cache is enabled, this option releases textures after they have been uploaded to graphics memory. This will reduce the memory usage of the texture cache while potentially reducing its effectiveness. Enabling this option to free up system memory, this system setting only affects textures loaded after the setting has been enabled. That seems a little strange. Yeah. Uh, Unless yeah, this- it's a workaround for enable texture cache and it doesn't work properly, and then you can enable this other thing to release the texture cache so it doesn't drain your memory. Right. Uh, that's the only reason I could think on that one. The pet skill for command has been fixed. And fix an issue with the housing decorations return to owner button so that the bound item can be returned to the housing chest and escrow and added and also added the tooltip. Fix cosmetic pet and mount collection initialization issues and fix an issue where the quick slot bar would fail to display empty slots when the collections panel is first open. And as for a known issue, Several minstrel skill animations have been shortened, leaving the instrument in your hand after using a skill, such as Raise the Spirit, Bolster Courage, and Chord of Salvation. Using a Melody Resonance Stance skill, or many of the damage skills, should remove the instrument from your hand. That sounds awesome and in need of testing. (laughs) 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 Yeah, so therefore... 
all right. <laughs> it sounds awesome in need of testing. I, I totally want to log in a mini now and see if I can get them to, to keep their instruments in hand. Terry the bug tester. No, I just think it would be cool to run around with, with my fiddle in hand. I suppose we can do that. Now next, we have a update 23.3 Quick Bits. And I'm trying to say, what in the world are Quick Bits? Uh, it's just Squirrel's basic rundown of if the patch notes were too long, didn't read. Um, <laughs> you can read this article instead. And it, it summarizes it fairly succinctly, so we don't really have to go through this line by line. All right, then. And besides, we already beat it to death as it is. Yeah. <laughs> then let's head into Lurcher Beacon issue 96, where it looks like it's very chilly. That's Thorin's Hall. That's is it? Th- it is. It's Thorin's Hall as seen from... um. The Silverdeep mine area, the the hill over Silverdeep. Ah, oh. it took me a while to identify it. I actually stared at it, stared at it for like ten minutes trying to figure it out. Um, but yeah, because you've got that little pool where the bar guests are off to the lower right, and then that slope in the background actually leads to the other mine, where you have the uh, dwarf elf starter intro thingy. Okay. And then that's that's Farron's court right there in the in the middle. I I believe that. I've spent way too long trying to dissect stuff in this game, but I've I've actually seen that view pretty often. So it was nice. It right. wasn't super hard for me to identify it. It's so the beacon- like a panoramic shot of it. I think is what it is. Yeah, it does look a bit like that. My alert drone. <laughs> For our community spotlight, Material Middle Earth has posted a collection of Lotus Store Weapon Skins collection. You can check that out, of course, at the link provided. And anyone in the live show? Yeah, we have a few people. So if you're listening to this live, you can join Songborough Story Club for a Hobbit roleplay event on Sunday, February 3rd on Laurelin. And Fibro Jedi talks about the recent Bjorning class changes in his new blog post. And Wandering Around Arda has posted a new book for Lotro Fashion Blog called Lake Town Angler. Which somehow I missed. Yeah, well, it's not exactly a place that you like angling at, right? <laughs> no, somehow I missed that there was a new post. And I read the beacon twice. Hmm. That's very cool. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, of course, complete with her catching fish on the lake. Well, yes. I mean, what else would you be doing in an angling outfit? Yes. <laughs> well, yeah. For a kin hall this week, Varadan is a kin on the Langible server. They are recruiting after some of their cap level players had to leave due to real life commitments. They are a social kinship open to all, any and all players regardless of race, class, or level. Though, as her namesake suggests, they strongly welcome lady dwarves. Our members Participate in a variety of group activities, from skirms and deeding to free sag and chicken play. Anyone interested in joining or learning more can click on the link or contact contact Namadi. So here's your question, and it seems to for for the weekly comment, and it seems to relate to our fun little headpiece here from Thorns Hall, and that is, what region in Lotro has the best snow? Uh, Frostbluff. So, Talmathedris, maybe? I mean, the the Talmathedris music plays in Frostbluff 
or in the regions around Frost Bluff, so. You have snowball fights, so obviously right. it's got oh, the best. And you can make snowmen there, <laughs> so obviously it has the best snow. Oh, well, I guess you get a point there. And what do you say about that area? I know you haven't been to some of the areas, but you have been to Frost Bluff, maybe. Yeah, I think that I, I agree with Terry's point about um, it having the best snow, like for snowball fights in Frost Bluff. Um, I also think that Forakel has some cool snow, just the the atmosphere around it. If I'm thinking of the right place, it just you feel cold while you play the game. Almost, yeah. it's just yeah. the atmosphere is really cool. So, um, also in the forums, people are saying the Misty Mountains as well, um, as well as uh, Wildermore or Wildermore. So, yeah, yeah. Actually, with the way things are this week. Because of all the snow and Arctic, weather. I have the best you know snow. That? Okay, I have <laughs> I have Forakel outside my front door. Yeah. So when I saw this, the first thing that came to my mind is is an answer that you two definitely would not give. And I was thinking, Isilian, because there's none. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh good. Sorry, I wasn't in much of a snow mood this week after <laughs> <laughs> See, I yeah. I love snow. Um I'm I'm not a fan of like the super frigid cuz it's it was so cold this week that it couldn't snow anymore because there was there's it's just too cold and too dry. There's no moisture in the air. Um right. so like my ideal temperature is the the low twenties where it's it's cold enough to be cold cold enough to get snow, but not you know it's not like the negative degrees <laughs> <laughs> that we were seeing earlier this week. And yeah, when you get to the negative one and then you top that off with twenty five mile per hour winds, not fun. So so yeah, I was living in Forakel this week. Oh yes, yeah, yikes. Yikes, indeed. Yeah, when you when you were saying actually what or what Arinda was saying earlier about when you're playing in Forakel, you feel cold. That is true because in the Misties, I mean, granted the Misties has lots of snow, but you don't really get that that sense of isolation that you get in Forakel because Forakel's just got those great flat spaces where you have nothing but snow and more snow and yet more snow. Um, and then ditto Wildemore. Wildemore's got that, that freezing effect that goes on as you approach certain locations. Um, but that's more artificial as opposed to Forakel, which feels more naturally just really frigid. Well, and, and Forakel as well, and correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't there a lot of like wind sound effects? So you just, you add yeah. to that. The visual isolation, you can just, you can hear the wind and it just makes you want to go put on a sweat. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. And actually, you don't hear the wind as much in the Misties, pre- presumably because I don't know that the Misties necessarily would be terrifically windy because of it, it's all mountainous and there's there's trees and stuff to kind of cut the wind. Whereas you don't really have that in Forakel, and it's just this wide open expanse of really cold. Also, the water will kill you in Forakel, where it will not in the Misties. So there's that. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> There is that. In our fan site news this week, uh, we have Adventures with Elda Returns. So you see Elda's first stream back. And and they continue with the Legacy of the Necromancer Part 21. And easily lost with McVegan Pants. Lost in Hlingris. Ogre's Epic Adventures in Go on Crick Hollow, and he watched the Mythgard in Middle Earth with the Tolkien Professor, and Gar- Gondor has no druids with a druid's fire. He watched Epic Shenanigary with Tesla the Panda, and he watched Adventures After Dark with Big Ed Mustafa, and an army of one with the Spirit of Fire, the Iron Home Edition, and he watched Flights of Fancy with Wayward Plains. Quick question, if I can interject here. Yeah. If 
and I have not seen Druid's Fire's stream yet, but if Druid Fire is in Gondor, how can Gondor not have Druid? I guess I need to check the stream. I don't know. Well, that is a bit of a strange bit, I have to admit. I'll have to check out the stream. Maybe it'll explain it. Maybe because she's not a Gondorian druid, she's from elsewhere, and she just has to be traveling through Dru- through Gondor. That's probably it. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. This week's screenshot of the week is of Oberyn Stell and her companion, Thea Stonge, casting a last look at Lothlorien as they leave for Rohan. I have a feeling, though, that Terry would not look back. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I think that answers it all. <laughs> yep. But it is a really pretty shot, just aesthetically. Oh, I mean, looking back into Lothlorien is, is very lovely, as you had for Rohan. <laughs> because you can you can look back and say bye bye. <laughs> Keep it's your more lovely the fact that you're leaving. That's right, the fact that you're leaving it behind. <laughs> That's when it looks best. Okay. That's right. In the, it's in the rearview mirror. <laughs> Let's then head into our store sales. And Terry, what's on sale this week? Anything nice? Not really. Um, the Lotro bonus days brings you Hobnanigans. Yay, Hobnanigans is here through February 3rd. Yay. Um, yeah. also for a limited time, you can get the 10 black steel key bundle in the Lotro store. And, uh, Vault Store. Oh, wait, there is good stuff on sale. Sorry. I, apparently <laughs> I didn't, I, you know, I looked at this like five times and I put it into the show notes and apparently it just didn't whack me in the head. Yes, there's good stuff on sale. We have select vault storage, shared storage, inventory slots, and currency cap are 25% oh. off now through February 7th. Um, and the weekly coupon, I need to pick this up, gets you a plus 5,000 enhanced reputation supply times one with coupon enhanced rep now through February 7th. Yay! Inventory! Inventory's good. Whee! Except all of my inventory slots are full. I need more inventory slots! <laughs> Let's then head into our site news, and we'll begin with minimal VIP for max results. And this is how to... How much VIP time would be optimal to have if you wanted to spend as little as possible, but get as much out of it as possible for the long run. And, of course, that includes... Things like how much takes into account the 500 Lotro points you get per month on it. And, of course, all the other perks you get when you're running as VIP. Yeah, it's an, a really interesting concept, and it's good how he breaks it down. And that, I believe that's squirrels, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Because unfortunately... The site for right now. My computer and the and the site aren't talking to each other at the moment. Uh oh. Yeah. And we also have another wallpaper from the Antipodean writer, Thorn Song of Break of Day, stanzas five and six. It looks really cool. It does. Yeah, I think that was posted after my computer's <laughs> refused to talk to the site. So. Uh oh. Yeah. So I'll have to take care of that at some point. Hopefully a reboot will take care of it. Otherwise, maybe my region is not talking to it or something like that. Let's head into our new player question. And Arendus, what is the question this week? Well, uh, the question is this week, um, I'm not super familiar with how housing works. Um, how does, in particular, how does housing storage work? Like, are there items that you can buy to store stuff in your house that doesn't count towards 
like vault storage or does it count towards vault storage and is somehow connected to your vault or your inventory somehow or how does that work? It's essentially a chest that's in your house. It is not cum- it is not shared with your vault space or anything like that. It is completely separate. But all but if you have multiple chests in your house, then they all share the same space. They used to be separate spaces, but now they all share. There is there are still there is still more than one of me because I just want to make sure they didn't change that because I know at least. I know originally there were two or three different chests in the house that used to be separate, but now I think they all tie into the same space, unless they changed something since the last time I checked. Because I always get the smallest sized house <laughs> when I'm on the regular type houses, so I, mm. I really don't know what happens with the premium and the kinship houses all that much, and Terry had you keep um, track of that? Well, your kinship storage is different from your other s- housing storage. Well, yeah, yeah. Your kinship, of course, is owned by the kin. Um, but I'm pretty yeah. sure that the maximum yeah. amount of storage is the same for both. Yeah. I have I have a kinship house and I have a deluxe house. Okay. I don't have a premium house because I, do, I don't want my own bank vault. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want premium housing in somewhere that doesn't look like a bank vault. Um, I would love a Rohan house, or I would even settle for a Lothlorien flat. You know, oh. let, give me something I can fall plummet to my death from. I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> help your, help your friends next. work on the res deed in your own front yard. <laughs> Hey guys, come over and leap off the side of my house. <laughs> It'll be great. Yes, and that's. The, but anyway, you. It's separate from your bank vault or your shared storage. Yeah, so it's basically normally, just extra storage. Yeah, I normally just put housing decorations in there, though. I know kin, some kin sh- kins put in stuff that. Are commonly shared among members. Like I, w- in one kinship I had, they would used to keep all of the level fifty class quest items in there. Therefore, if you're level fifty or doing that class quest, you go to the kinship house and see are any of those items in there, and you could sometimes finish up all your level fifty class quests just by going into the kinship house. My kinship storage is full of cosmetics, but nothing from the most recent festivals because it's all bound to account. Well, there is that. Speaking of, hey, Standing Stone, please stop making that a thing. <laughs> <laughs> go go back to the not bound festival cosmetics because actually my kinship was founded so that during a Yule festival so that we could gather the, the Yule cosmetics and, and share them so that we didn't all have to grind for our own different sets of festival gear. Okay. Did that answer your question, Arandis? Yes, but there is a slight part two or follow-up <laughs> question. Okay. Um, <laughs> is there any way to access the stuff that you are storing in your house besides going to your house and getting it? Or is that the only way you can act? It's the only way I know of. There might be a plug-in for it, but, I mean, the easiest way is just to go there and look. Okay. I usually keep an alt parked at the house. But my personal house is above... So my personal house is in uh, Thorin's Hall, and so is my kinship, actually, in the same neighborhood. So my personal house is actually above the spot where the vault keeper is in the Thorns Hall neighborhood. So it's just a quick trip around the corner to get to the vault. Gotcha. Yeah, there is that. But anyway, yes, you have to go... As far as I know, you have to go to your house in order to look at what's in there or to access it and be able to 
do anything with it. And even if there were a plugin that would allow you to review what was in there, it would only show you what was there the last time you checked. Right. And because it wouldn't know what anyone else did in between if you had a shared house such as at a kin house or anything like that. Right. And it, it does make sense. I mean, to go back to your house to get it. I just didn't know if there was a, like a part two option. All right. Then let's head into our week in Lutra and Arandas. What were you up to? Well, this week, um, thanks to the help of friends, I completed the Drowned Treasury on my champ, which I have been stuck on for maybe a week or... No. A long... Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know exactly how long. Um, it was one of those. I could have done it on my own, but I was... I didn't necessarily want to because I kept getting stuck. And so I just kind of left it and left my poor champion in Moria and went off and played with the Bui Warning song. Uh, Traitor. Thanks to the, I know. I'm sorry. It's just so much fun. <laughs> I, it's just, I, I'm, I'm not apologetic. It's too much fun. Uh, but yes, the Drowned Treasury has been completed and my poor little Moria champ can now move on and keep working through Moria, so I'm excited about that. Um, I also helped some of the people involved with the podcast um, work on deeds for virtues, so that was kind of fun. We were just kind of running around in some of the lower level areas, um, just doing working on some deeds, so that was pretty much my week. Uh, Terry, what did you do this week? Well, um, Girls of Middle Earth ran through Daldinen on our little Hobbit burglars, so we inflicted the death of a thousand paper cuts on all of the things, which is basically the name that we came up with, because when you have a group of six Hobbit burglars and they're stabbing trolls in the knees, basically, <laughs> yeah, it's it's akin to death of a thousand paper cuts, because they're little tiny burglars and great big huge trolls. And they go down really fast. Um, Axley and friends made it to the Haunted Inn in Mirkwood and struck against Dan and Glor. And then we also practiced some Dwarven Diplomacy on Undead. Because... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Um, we did the, the Haunted Town quest. We had to determine, uncover what was going on there. And... and Dwarven Diplomacy was Sanswinda's term for it, and I just stole it because it was awesome. Because um, Dwarven Diplomacy basically means you run up to stuff and you whack at it with your axe to see if it will talk to you. And when it doesn't, you just move on to the next thing. <laughs> That's perfect. Because one of the quests was go talk to, go find, an, go find an undead willing to talk to you. So we just went and hit all of the undead until we find found one that was willing to talk to us. So yeah, dwarven diplomacy became a thing. Um, dwarven diplomacy equals whack-a-mole. <laughs> it was great. And um, so last week's we estimated it to level 90. So other champion this week did epic amounts of crafting. And I mean, it took like three days to do all of the crafting. To make food for her at level 90. He came up with... So she's got two full stacks of superior coffee, superior cooked food, superior trail food, and two stacks of soup. It was a lot of crafting. <laughs> yeah. For, for, well, and if I'm going to do crafting, that's pretty much the only thing that I'll, that I'll do. Because you can make your own food, so you don't have to run all over the landscape to gather materials for it and then worry you don't have enough materials. I didn't have to worry about not having enough materials. I did have to worry about not having enough cash, which is why she sent him money. But, which, and he actually burned through most of 50 gold to do all of the food. Um, yeah, but she's got food and she's ready to go now. And I might actually, I'm, I'm probably actually going to wait until after the update on Monday to see if she actually can finally kill things without nearly dying in the process. So, hmm. Pineleaf, how was your week? All right, we'll begin with the field trip where we continued in Wildermore and we got as far as Dunfast. We did the 
quests in Dunfast. I think we just finished up with all of those quests, which means that the next time we play those characters, I suppose we'll be heading over into Deer Tour. Oh, yay, for the song. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the very f- Oh, man, I actually know what you guys are talking about because I watched Andang's video on that, and that song, <laughs> his version of the song just ran. I'm going to have that song stuck in my head for a week. Uh-huh. Yeah, Andang has a particular hatred for that song. <laughs> <laughs> Then on Friday night fight, we ran, first we ran the DP wall, the, actually no, that is not, we were planning on running the deeping hall, and we had 12 people, we had 12 people there, it seemed like it was all gonna go perfect, and it turned out that there were some people there who had never done the, un- unlocked the, because in order to, Unlock uh, the deeping wall. You have to do the solo version of that, and which to do that, and that's such a pain. Solo version of Helm's Dyke. Therefore, we split into two groups: the lower level group and the upper level group. The upper level group ran Helm's Dyke, the six-player version of that. I think the lower level group was also planning on running Helm's Dyke, but it turned out there are some people there who'd never run the solo version because they're lower level people and. Some yeah. people just don't run those things until they hit get the uh, until they get to it in the epic. Or people like me, who I noticed that before last night, I think I had only run both of those current both of those epic battles only once on that character, and a level capped character, which means you know when that one time I ran it when <laughs> during the epic during the story epic line. story. Yep. So it it's such helps. a weird mechanic for unlocking it, though, because if you, because you can run the dike at six people, but it doesn't unlock the next thing. You have to run it in the solo duo for it to unlock yeah. the next thing, which is just bizarre. Yeah, bizarre. Also annoying. Yeah, and also annoying. Thus, we managed, we managed to run that, and I got some. Pretty good jewelry out of that. I think I got two really nice pieces of jewelry from it. And I'm, well, because this is the first time I think I've done this. It seems the first time I've done the six player version of that, or the first time I've done six player version of that with a group that knew what they were doing. And it's possible that I had done it before with someone who says, <laughs> but in any case, I, we ran that. I got a number of promotion points. We, I think we managed to platinum two of the three side quests, which was pretty good. Then after that, we were wondering, what are we going to do next? Then we decided to run the Bells of Dale. By that time, we had only five people left, but we managed to pretty effectively get through it. I believe that we managed to get through the boss fight with out any of the rats getting into the bell, so that was a very nice run over there. On Anor, I finished up a book two of the epic storyline, and I also finished up the Moonlands quest, but I still have a couple of slayers that I need to complete. I still need to get those bog lurkers, which are a real pain. Is there a good concentration of bog lurkers anywhere in the Lone Lands? As far as I could tell, there aren't any <clears throat> good places for them. Garth or Garwin. Oh, you mean inside the dungeon itself? In the instance, but also there's several in um up in that higher level area. Yeah, you know, that but- used to require a fellowship to go through. Yeah, that's the problem. Okay, I have to see if I can get in there with a group or something like that. Because but, yeah, actually the highest concentration is in the instance. Yeah, I was afraid it's going. You were, you were going to say something like that. I'm just wondering, hmm, can I rerun the instance with Radagast and just... <laughs> well, there's that too, because actually you can get to that through... Um, well, no, you have to go to Rivendell for that, don't you? No, you go to the Reflecting Pool and I think Oscar Ruth has a Reflecting Pool. 
Oh, that's right, because it's the instance. It's not session play. It's Rivendell for session plays. Re- so yeah, right, you should yeah, just re- be able to run it through from the reflecting pool. Yeah, and, and one it, you know, just let Radagast yap for a while. <laughs> yeah, there is that because it's a very annoying up in the main part of the Red Swamp, and the other one they don't seem to have very high concentration, so it's great. <sighs> one. I think it's still one of the worst of the Slayer Ds that you've got. We have, I still haven't finished up all the wargs, but the wargs will be very easy to do, I think. What's, being able to finish up with wargs, there are plenty of places I think I could go in order to do those. Yeah. And I know where to, I know where to go for trolls, it's just that. Uh, well, and trolls are super right concentrated too. Yeah, they are stupid concentrated. They're only in one place really, but boy are they concentrated there. And I think I just wasn't, in the mood of doing all the trolls the last time I was in that area. I just got to the first level that. So I do have those three Slayer Deeds to complete. I think I have all of the Discovery Deeds except for the Garth the Garwin ones because, well, that is a fellowship area. So unless I get into a so unless I manage to run to a group that's going in there, I'm probably not going to finish up those. Now, in the North Downs, I've managed to I think, finish most of my stuff over in North Downs. I might have one or two quests. I still have... I might still have a few more goblins to kill, but that shouldn't be too difficult to, to, to be able to complete there. But worms... Now, here's my question. Why do the worms at Fornost not count for North Downs worms? Really? Really. That sounds like a bug, because I'm pretty sure if you're in the instance and you find them, that they do. Yeah, well, the ones at Fornost on the landscape don't count, because the first time I killed one there, I was saying... Why didn't I unlock a new deed? Did I already have it open? No, I don't have it open. I did not get that deed open until I killed my first worm in within the gap where you have it over there. I just need to go back into the area. They're pretty much concentrated in the area up in the pass. And I think the only reason why I hadn't finished it was the last time I went in that area, uh, there was someone else tearing through it. I think couple of level 50s so mm. i decided uh maybe i'll just wait because i i didn't want to try to follow them and just trivialize the experience so i still have a few more things to find i think i might still have one more exploration deed on it and i think i still need to get kindred but i'm coming to pretty much to an end on the north downs area and i did north cotton farm in Ivendim. And that's getting me pretty close to Kindred on the Shire. So I think it, I think I need, I'm only a few Madams away from getting Kindred with, uh, with the Madam House. And I think that pretty much covers what I did on the Honor character, which is quite a lot. We currently have 21 supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to join this illustrious rate of players and help support local players, simply go to the donations page where you can support the Players Alliance on Patreon. There you'll find rewards, including a mention on the podcast of your choice, or you can be guests with us for an episode of Local Players News. And this week, we actually have an email from Glambold and Terry. What does he say? So, Glambold writes, Hi. As all the regulars on the podcast are all based in the U.S., hopefully you can attend this once-in-a-lifetime exhibition in New York at the Morgan Library and Museum. Uh, link in the show notes. If you can get to see it, then please do so. And then there's also a uh, YouTube link in the show notes. Um, I went to the Oxford exhibition of the same material last year, and it was superb. Um, so this is a Tolkien exhibition at a museum and library in New York's New York City. And there are also a series of events that are going on. There's a couple of panels. Um, there is, in April, an event called 
a long-awaited party, and I'm going. I talked to my that mom. That sounds so fun. I talked to my mom into going. Um, oh, it's a long-expected party, I think is what it's called. I'm not opening it up because I'm worried that media is going to pop up on the mixler. Um, anyway, it's April 4th from 7 to 9, and because the day after I got this email on Twitter, there was a tweet from John Bartolo, who some of you may or may not know is the founder of Lonely Mountain Band, both in the game and in real life. And the real life Lonely Mountain Band is going to be playing this event. So I talked my family into going and we're going. I got everything booked. We're going for to New York City for three days. It's going to be awesome. And as long as I keep my mouth shut, none of you will know who I am. <laughs> it does sound like a really fun event though i might have to see if i can get some vacation time that just it sounds all right sam burke posted something in the chat saying that the whites inside of scorgrim's tomb count as barrow downs whites a surprise me when recently he did the epic quest that requires you to enter the tomb uh, that's in the Thorns Gate area of Veridluene. Hmm. That's weird. I think usually I have all of my whites done by the time I get to that part of the epic story, so. <laughs> yeah, because that's noticed. pretty far in there. Yeah. If you would like to send us an email, you can send it to podcast at lotroplayers.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at the Players Alliance at Players Ally, Lotro Players at Lotro Players, Erandis at Erandis, Piney Fit Piney Needles, Sandwinda at Sandwinda, and Terry Adwin at Terry Adwin. The Players Alliance has two shows every week. On Thursdays at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have Video Players News, and on Saturdays at 30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have Lotro Players News. And you can join us for our live shows at lookplayers.com slash live. And that is all for tonight, and this is Pilot News reminding you to skirmish responsibly, especially during the next upcoming skirmish event.